Lesson 43 on uh, Political Jurisprudence and its Development. Today's topic is on impeachment. What is the concept of impeachment and what is the practice of impeachment in the Republic of Kenya? It is very important to begin by the following objective. To understand what impeachment stands for in the political jurisprudence. Let us begin first by looking at the definition. What is impeachment? What is to impeach? Impeachment is equated to removal and it is equated to the act of removing one from a political office and to impeach is equated to remove. But what are we impeaching? What are we removing? Before I get there, allow me to look at the following learning outcomes. What we take away with us here is about political jurisprudence and its understanding in political justice system. What is a political justice system? It is about the laws around politics and how political disputes are settled through the judicial process that is known to us. Then another thing we want to take home and run away with is the political institutions. Which are these political institutions and why are they so important in the political jurisprudence for us today? Another thing we want to take away and run with is exactly to impeach an individual by removing that individual from an office. And we are going to explain it further. Another point I want us to take away here and put into perspective is clearly seen in the jurisprudence in politics. It is in the impeachment we can put jurisprudence in politics into context. And we are going to make reference to Kenya as a constitutional democracy, an emerging one, and compare Kenya, at least with the United States of America, when it comes to the concept of impeachment. Before we go on, it is very important to give recommendations to the readings or the precedents or the judgment law. This is going to help us a great deal to battle with the concept itself. But let us begin with the concept of power. Because when I say to remove somebody from power, the next question is, what is power? In the early 19th century, a French scholar, Baudin, defined power using sovereign in French. Sovereign is always related to the state, the sovereignty of the state. But this sovereignty of the state is given to the people in the Republic of Kenya by the Constitution of 2010. That means the people have got the power, but the people can exercise this power through electing their representatives, those who can speak on their behalf, but also directly by picketing, by peaceful demonstrations, and also by demonstrations that must be done within the law. What is power? Power is the ability to make decision, ability to make laws that will guide the citizenry in behavior, in taking some actions. When we say somebody has state power, that is a state officer, somebody has state power, that is a public officer, they have offices. But how do they get to those offices? 
<laughs> they get to those offices first by being elected procedurally and according to law into such offices. But also they get to such offices by appointment. They are appointed to such offices by the appointing authority, the executive, the president. But also they can be nominated by maybe their political parties, by their leaders in such political parties. That is uh, again adding to the following expression, quote, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that is why there must be some constraints and restraints in which an individual who has been given such state power can be constrained by the law and can be restrained by the law from power abuse or from office abuse. And if need be, can as well be removed, but within the law. That is where we say impeachment is the legal process of removing an individual from such political office. That means removing power from that individual. This brings us to a question of looking at certain critical principles and concepts. The distinction between legality and legitimacy. Whereas legality is closer to what is legal, legal issues, matters of law, legitimacy is closer or is related to what is political, what is acceptable, what is deliberated, what is consensual. When we say something is legitimate, does not mean that that thing is legal. When we say something is legal, does not mean that it is legitimate. Some things, some actions are legal but not legitimate, whereas some actions are legitimate but are not necessarily legal. We need to draw a line between what is political and what is jurisprudential by looking at what is legal versus what is legitimate. Again, alongside this kind of argument, I would like to look at the concept of constitutionality as compared to the concept of constitutionalism. When people say something is constitutional, does not mean that that thing fits well within the range of constitutionalism. Constitutionalism, by and large, grapples with even political ideologies and certain ideas that may not necessarily be ideas of law or ideas about law. That is the reason for why some people think that the Constitution is not the statute. And they say, in that case, the Constitution and the law. Not the law by also including the Constitution. Because the Constitution is by and large very extensive and very complex because it defines the functions of the state organs, the institutions known as political institutions, other institutions that share the state power. But in Kenya, this also can be attributed to the people themselves. The citizens are in themselves institution because they have the state power. And when they elect their representatives, they are exercising that power and their political right and the freedom to exercise political rights under Article 38. It is bringing us to the question of constitutional rights as well as constitutional obligations. Any part of law, substantive and procedural, has got rights and obligations that we must again grapple with. 
So when we say somebody is given the state power through elections, through appointments, and through nominations, we are also making a relevant statement which is on the duty and obligations. This person has got the obligations to adhere to certain strict mandate and functions and the failure, that means the contravention of such principles and rules provided for by the law can amount to his dismissal or otherwise his removal from that office. And that is properly stated within the law. When I said one can get into power through elected process, that is elective laws or laws of elections, that is electoral jurisprudence and electoral justice in the Republic of Kenya. But also we look at the appointed positions. Positions of appointment are from the executive. In this case, the president, the head of state and the head of government and the chief commander in the armed forces that can appoint individuals to such elective positions or to that can appoint an individual to such power position of the state and that is constitutional and within the law in the Republic of Kenya. Also nominations. One can also be nominated. The president can appoint ambassadors, envoys to foreign countries to represent the state. But that is appointing. And in that case, such state officer must be also vetted by parliament and must be questioned by parliament. And with the approval of the parliament, the president shall appoint that individual. Nominations the same, but nominations also through political parties, through politicians or groups or associations, one can be appointed, can be nominated, but also can be elected by members of that association. So that is how people get into such positions of power. But when we look at the political justice, it is not only looking at the laws allowing one to get such power, but also looking at the laws that remove that individual from power should there be need. And in that case, it is what we call impeachment. And that is the removal of an individual from power. When we say that an individual is impeached, we are talking about a process. The concept of process or the theory of process must be looked at against the judiciary in the sense that court orders. Court is an authority in the sense that it has the mandate to administer justice in all aspects, all fields of life in the state. But there is what we call quasi-judicial authority or quasi-judicial powers that the same judiciary shares with other arms of government, other institutions, other agencies of the state. For instance, namely, we look at the legislature. For instance, we look at the Senate. It is only the Senate that can impeach an elected sitting governor and remove him from power. The county assembly, through the members of the county assembly, can move the motion of impeachment uh, of the governor and can vote to impeach the governor. But the article of impeachment must be moved to the impeachment trial that only the Senate can do within the law. In this case, the Senate has got the judicial power to impeach, and the decision made by the Senate is already considered punishment. And in this case, the Senate can prosecute 
and can execute through the verdict without making all references to the judiciary that is in Kenya. In the United States of America, the story is a little bit different when it comes to the presidential impeachment, which is in the Constitution of the United States of America. The Congress can initiate the process and can issue subpoena against a sitting president for criminal investigations if the Congress feels that the president has violated the Constitution and has committed certain illegalities and crimes, then can debate and vote for impeachment. Then that is impeachment article that, if voted for, must be moved to the Senate. It is only the Senate that can carry out what we call the impeachment trial of the president and must be presided by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. If the Senate is of the opinion that the impeachment article is valid and the president, given the trial and given the right of hearing and fairness in the administrative action is found to be guilty, then it is the Senate to impeach the president. It happened during President Richard Nixon in 1974. And Nixon, realizing that the impeachment was going to be successful, decided to preempt it by resigning. The other one was Donald J. Trump that was impeached by the Congress but reinstated when the impeachment process failed at the Senate. That one doesn't again show us any distinction when it comes to impeachment and sentencing because these are two important concepts that we need to battle with. Pa impeachment and sentencing are all punishments. Only that impeachment is a political process, but it is a punishment. Sentencing is a legal and judicial process in the criminal justice system, but it is a punishment. Where do we draw the line? When we say that one has been duly impeached by the Senate and is no longer exercising his or her power and authority as the governor of a county. And according to Article 75, sub-Article 5, such person is not qualified to hold any other state office in the Republic of Kenya. That is already conclusive when it comes to the removal clause of the governor. When we look at it from the other perspective of sentencing, sentencing is a legal and judicial process, and it is the court to sentence an individual. The court, I mean also the magistrate court. And once the individual is sentenced, only the court can lift it. And when we say the sentence is lifted, then that means the person is liberated but also through the presidential mercy in which the president or the head of state can forgive certain convicted persons and that one lifts that conviction from them. Only the president is given that privilege. But how about impeachment? Impeachment can only be lifted by the authority issuing that impeachment and that is the Senate. Can the president lift the impeachment from an individual? Question mark. These are some of the questions that can worry an individual. But for us to grapple with this, let us look at the context. Let's put context into these theories around impeachment and the concepts around the practice of impeachment as a process. 
in Kenya, we have had material cases that are very good. We have the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya under Section 181, Subsection 2, where a governor who is elected can be impeached procedurally by the Senate after the members of the country assembly have voted for the impeachment article. However, still, we need to look at the County Governments Act. The County Governments Act, Section 33, also provides for the impeachment of the governor and the procedures to be followed. But all this read together, what is so interesting in the Republic of Kenya is the case law that is building a very strong political jurisprudence. The case law here is the successful impeachment of Honorable Ferdinand Waititu, the then governor of Kiambu County, and also the successful impeachment of Honorable Mike Mbuvisonko, the then governor of Nairobi County, and the failed impeachment of Anne Mumbi Waiguru, the, the governor of Kirinyaga County. And when we say one is impeached, that means one is punished. But impeachment also comes from evidence and the law in terms of the investigations and persuasion. The impeached person must also be given time to defend himself or herself before the Senate. And if the Senate finds the person guilty, then that person will stand to be impeached. One day, members of the press asked Chief Justice, Lady Justice Mother Kome, about the impeached governor and the possibility of the impeached governor running again for a state office. Well, the Chief Justice responded cleverly and wisely by saying that impeachment and sentencing are both punishments and they can only not be there. They can only fail to exist when they are lifted. So when the court sentences an individual and convicts that individual, only the court can lift it. If Senate impeaches an individual, it is only the Senate that can lift it. If it is not lifted, that individual remains impeached. And that is it. So having this is a question of the separation of powers in the sense that the legislature has got that quasi-judicial authority in the impeachment process and the court also has its power and authority to sentence whoever is found to be guilty and convict that person in some time in jail or put that person under the punishment that is provided for in the penal code. Having all these elaborations around the impeachment, the question is, can the chairman, uh, Wafula W. w Chebukati, the chairman of the IEBC, Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission, proceed and clear Honorable Mike Sonko to run again in the gubernatorial position in Mombasa County in August elections. Already some members of the society um, Kituwa Chasheria uh, and the others had moved to petition the High Court at Mombasa and uh, Honorable Justice John Mativo issued an order 
that restrains the IEBC from clearing Mr. Sonko from running only for this order to be withdrawn later. But the question is, the law is clear, the constitution is clear, and uh, the question of impeachment remains valid. Interpretation is a big problem. And when we talk of quasi-judicial powers given to other arms of government, apart from the judiciary, but also other state agencies, such as constitutional commissions, then we are referring ourselves also to another reality, the problem of interpretation, because the absolute interpretative authority is the judiciary. And in case of any gap or misunderstanding, then one can move to court, at least for the interpretation and the judicial opinion. And in this case, it is very important to question ourselves. Who should prosecute? Who should prosecute is clearly stated within the law. That is the office of the director of the public prosecutions. And that is in the act. Can the private individuals, entities, lawyers be allowed to prosecute an individual? That is a question mark. Is the DPP's office free from interferences? Is it independent? There's another question mark. If it is not or it is, then where does it draw its mandate from? From the Constitution? From the people of Kenya? That is, again, another question mark. So there are so many questions that we need to look at. And this is what boils down to our conversation on the political, ju political jurisprudence and the investigations around the theories and concepts around impeachment. So today we have talked about impeachment and uh, I would conclude by asking you to share these thoughts and discuss them and find out whether it is proper for Mr. Wafula Chebukati to bar an impeached governor from rerunning in his very county or in another county, and if that is justified by the law and which part of the law. Thank you for tuning in. I keep on urging you, please, give thumb up and subscribe. If you find this content interesting, please don't fail to share. Bye for now.